Lord is good. The Lord is good. Hallelujah. I welcome you all. Today is a special Sunday. It's a day to glorify in the Lord. Today is a day of our worship. Wherever you are, uh, I know that today is a day you need to keep holy as a day that we worship our God. First of all, I want to thank God for the life he has given to us and also given us another opportunity to be here and to gather in his presence, even though in not in a physical form, but spiritually, I know that we are gathered and we are united. So I want to thank God and I want to also encourage you to continue to fix your eyes in God. We're going to pray because today is a special Sunday. Father, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for grace. Thank you, O oh God, for making everything possible for us, Lord. It is not by our strength, it is not by our will, it is not by our power, but it is by the Spirit. Father, I thank you for the gift of life. As many who are alive today, they are alive because you are the giver of life. We thank you. I want you to join with me as we worship the Lord. Just glorify Him and thank Him. Father, we worship you as we are about to have our Sunday service. We thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you because you will not fail your children. Thank you, O oh God, for you have made everything possible for us. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Lord, we worship you. We thank you because we know that you live it forever. And as we declare this service, as we declare this service, open the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want you to raise up your Bible because, you know, uh, as we are about to hear the word of God, we need to go into the scripture, wherever you are, pick your Bible, you know, and also connect in the spirit. Make sure that you are connected and open up your heart as God is going to release his word upon your life. Remember, the word of God is what we all need to survive. And the word of God is what we all need to stand in the circumstances that we are. So you need the word of God. Don't despise the word. It is very important. So I want you to pick up your Bible, pick up your scripture as you're going to study the scripture and I pray. And God will bless you today because today God is going to release miracle in your life. No matter how distance apart you are, the miracle working God will locate you today. In the name of Jesus Christ, the miracle God will locate your family today. In the name of Jesus Christ, the God of healing will locate your head today. In the name of Jesus Christ, the God of deliverance will locate your life, your spirit today. In the name of Jesus Christ, the God of favor will locate you today. In the name of Jesus, as we stand together in faith, miracles will happen in your life. In the name of Jesus, because the Bible said that they that trusted in the Lord, they will not be put to shame. You will not be disgraced because that is not the agenda and that's not the thought of God. So I want you to pick up your Bible as I'm going to read through the book of Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. I am going to speak a message which I title The Divine Hope of the Saint. The Divine Hope of the Saint. The Divine Hope of the Saint. So read with me from the book of Romans chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. He said, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of 
the glory of God. Verse 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. Are you following? Are you with me? Verse 5. And he says that, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the above of God. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. By the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. By the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. He's talking about our hope in Christ. Remember that Christians have another hope that is different from the hope of the unbelievers Jesus is our hope so today we are going to learn many things about hope as I said I'm going to preach a message which I title the divine hope of the saints who are the saints we are the children of God through Christ Jesus is the head of the church and we are the church as we gather and as we congregate and as we believe in him so now Christians have much hope more than the unbelievers Christian hope came from above so that is why many things may be happening on earth here but that's why the Bible says that though we are in the world, but we are not of the world. We are in the world, the earth, which we are, but we are not of the world because we belong to heaven. We came from heaven. We belong to heaven. So I want to encourage you today to be focused as we're going to go into this in a deeper form so that you will understand what our hope is all about and what divine hope is all about. The place that I read, he said, therefore being justified by faith, he said we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That is when we have hope in Jesus Christ. Remember I said to you, Jesus is the only hope that we have. And that is the only hope that the world has then verse 2 we say by whom also we have ourselves by faith unto this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God in the hope of the glory of God now hope is similar to faith in other words without hope faith cannot be activated with that hope also faith also cannot be activated hope cannot be activated so they are they work together it is your hope that faith has an asset to carry its work remember in hebrew it tells us that faith is evidence of what we hope for that thing that we have we've not seen it but we hope for it and the bible encourages us that we shall continue to hope in God because the expectation the hope of the righteous will not be cut off so now I want you to understand that you have much hope in Christ because even though the world end today your hope also is there in the kingdom's glory that is eternity and that is heaven and I pray for you you will not miss heaven. Nothing will make you to miss heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. Nothing will make you to miss heaven. In the name of Jesus. Your hope in Christ will not fade away. Your hope in Christ will not wither. And your hope in Christ will not be cut off. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I take you to the book of Proverbs chapter 10 verse 28. He said, the hope of the righteous shall be gladness, but expectation of the wicked 
shall perish. I know you are the children of light. You are a child of light. And I know that you are not a wicked man. Because the Bible said the expectation of the wicked. What is the expectation of the wicked? Evil. To do evil, to commit atrocities. But the expectation of the righteous shall be what? Gladness. You see, that's why you see most of Christians are happy today. No matter the trial, no matter the circumstances, no matter the fear. So much confidence. What is that confidence? Christ, who has made everything possible for us. Christ, who has given us hope. Christ, who is our hope. Christ, who is our life eternity. Christ, who is the only one that stands for us. So now, you are hope. We always manifest gladness. In Psalm 71 verse 14, he said, but David talking now, he said, but I will hope continually and we praise you yet more and more. I will hope continually. When I take you to Job chapter 14, Job talked the same thing, even verse 7 and verse 14. You see, he said he will wait till his change come. He will wait his appointed time till his change eh, come. He's talking about hope. Now, when we talk about hope, I take you to Psalm 147, verse 11. The Bible he said, The Lord delight in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. Church, this is the time. If you are not hoping in God, if you are not trusting in the Lord, it means you are doing yourself dangerous things. You are not doing yourself well because our hope, according to the scripture, will not perish. Our hope in Christ will not perish. So now you need to activate your hope. You need to lift up your hope in Christ more and continue to hope more and more. Psalm 9 verse 18, he said, The hope of the poor shall not be perished. The hope of the poor shall not what? Be perished. The hope of the righteous shall not be perished. The hope of those who believe in God, it shall not be perished. Now, what is this hope we are talking about? What is this divine hope that we are talking about? Now, when we talk about divine hope, we are talking about great confidence. Great confident expectation of good things to come. Great confident expectation of good things to come. What is this hope? To be focused on good outcome from the invisible. What is hope? Hope is a gift of the Spirit that worketh in us to live as Christ. What is hope? Is the power to wait and stay till the result manifests. You can see and understand the meaning of hope. So I want you to know that your hope, it is who you are in Christ. Because as a Christian, if you don't have hope in God, you, it means you are perishing. So now when you go to the book of First Peter chapter 1 verse 13, he said, therefore, prepare your mind for action before sober-minded. He said, be sober-minded. He said, set your hope fully on the grace to be given you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Set your hope fully. Let your hope be full in Christ. I said and I repeatedly that every Christian, you have hope in God. And I pray for you that this season, as you trust the Lord, as you hope in Him, you will not be put to shame. You will not be disgraced. No forces of darkness will disgrace you. No enemy will hurt you. No virus will hurt you. Because your hope is in the Lord. And God will deliver those who trust in Him. Those who hope in Him they will receive. They will get the result and manifestation because it is the promise.
through G Lord Jesus Christ that we have. May every hope and every expectation, every desire that you have in this season, may you receive them now. In the name of Jesus Christ. May you receive them now. In the name of Jesus Christ. May you receive them now. In the name of Jesus Christ. May your heart not be cut off. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Now, how does this hope in Christ help us? How does it help us? Through hope. You discover that through hope that we have in Christ, we are being purified. We have access to return back to Christ again. We have access of holiness and righteousness, even though when we are not perfect. Even though we, we remain imperfect, but through our hope in Christ for perfection, for holiness, for righteousness, through our hope, he made us worthy. Through our hope in him, through our trust in him, he qualified us to be righteous. He qualified us to be holy. He qualified us to be his sons and to remain qualified as kingdom inheritance. Why? Because of the hope that we have in him. Because of the hope we have in him. So through this hope that we have in Christ, through this divine hope, we are being set apart from the world. We are being set apart from unbelievers. We are being set apart from the kingdom of darkness. And we are being made worthy to be kingdom inheritance. To be qualified as sons and children of God. Psalm 4 verse 3, he said, you can be sure of this. He said, the Lord set apart the godly. For himself, he said, the Lord set apart the godly for himself. He said, he will answer when I call to him. David talking. That the Lord set his children apart. That each time they call unto him, he will do what? He will answer. And that's why he said that Jeremiah 33 verse 3. He said, you shall call unto me. He said, I will do what? I will answer. He's talking about those who hope in him, those who trust in him, those who anchor their hope in him, those who trust in him. That's what he's talking about. So you are those, you are among of those who hope in the Lord. You are among of those who hope in the Lord. And I pray that your hope and expectation will not be perished. Deuteronomy 14, verse 2. He said, you have been set apart as holy to the Lord. He said, you have been set apart as holy to the Lord. He said, you are God and he has chosen you from all nations of the earth to be his own special treasure. You have been set apart as a holy one. Why? Because of hope. And you have been choosing to be his special candidate. Church, I want you to understand, children of God, that this hope we are talking about is powerful. This hope we are talking about, that is the helmet of salvation. That as we hope in him, he set us apart from the earth, from other people that dwell on earth. That is why in this season, I prophesy into your life, you have been set apart. You are not going to be a victim. You are not going to be a carrier of any pestilent disease. You are not going to be a carrier of any disease and any sickness. You are not going to be a carrier of shame, of humiliation, of disgrace. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will not be a carrier of shame and disgrace and humiliation in this season. In the name of Jesus. You will not be a carrier of sickness of any kind. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we thank you, Lord, because I know that this one has been set apart. And your eyes is upon them. And you will not abandon them. And they will not be a victim of any kind. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 
So now through hope that we have in Christ, we are being set apart. We are being purified. Number two, through hope in Christ, we are marked as an overcomer. We are marked as a conqueror. We are marked as a winner. You have overcome because Jesus, he overcame the world. He gave us the power. That power of overcomer is in you. That grace of overcomer is in you. That inheritance belongs to you. You are overcomer. So you have overcome the walls of darkness. And so shall it going to be. In the name of Jesus. First John chapter 5, verse 4 to 5. He said, For whatever is born of God overcome the world. Whatever that is born of God overcome the world. And he said, This is the victory that overcome or that has overcome the world. Our faith, who is the one? Who overcome the world? He said, but he who believe that Jesus is the Son of God, he who have this hope, is a career of overcomer. He who have this hope is marked as an overcomer. So you are an overcomer, and you will overcome every challenges in your life. You will overcome every trial of life. You will overcome the trial. The challenges, the, 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 the circumstance that you find yourself, you will overcome them in the name of Jesus Christ. When you go to that first John chapter 4, again, verse 4, he said, You are from God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Greater is he who is in you. Children of God, you carry God that is bigger than the earth. You carry God of healing. You carry God of deliverance. You carry God of miracle that is bigger than this universe. That is bigger than what is happening on earth here. He said, because he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. So why do you need to be afraid? Why do you need to be weak in faith? This is a time for you to recognize and activate your hope in God. You are called overcomer. And you have overcome every circumstance through Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. You are marked as an overcomer, as a conqueror. Say, I am a winner. Say, I am a conqueror. Say, I am overcomer. My name is overcomer. Anything that flies around you, anything that comes your way, you shall overcome. You shall win the battles of life. You shall win the battles of virus. You shall win the battles of sickness. Because you have been marked as an overcomer. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number three thing, how does this hope in Christ help us? Is through hope in Christ, we have strength day by day. We are being strengthened day by day. We have strength all over our life, all over our ways. Even when we are weak, when we remember Jesus, we are being strengthened. Our faith are being lifted. Our morale are being lifted. Our hope will, uh, will rise again because of Jesus Christ. Because of who? Jesus Christ. That's what he said in Philippians 4.13. He said, true Christ who strengthens you. True Christ, because you hope in Christ, he gives you strength. And true Christ, that, that strength that you receive from him, he said, you can do all things. You can overcome. You can defeat your enemies. You can possess your possession. You can take over your inheritance. You can occupy. Why? Because there is strength in you. And that strength is a supernatural strength. It's a divine strength from divine hope. 
that we have in Christ. That's the divine hope of the strength of the saint. I prophesy into your life that wherever you are, are you weak? Are you weary? Are you going down day by day? From now henceforth, may you be awakened in the spirit. I join my faith with your faith. May your faith, may your strength, may your hope, may it be awakened right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I awake you from the spirit of deadliness, from the spirit of weakness. May you be awakened now. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I decree and I declare as many who are weak, He said, let the weak say, I am strong. And let the poor say, I am rich. I declare it upon your life. So shall it going to be in the name of Jesus Christ. Through Christ, we have strength day by day. That's why Isaiah 40, 31, He said, they that hope in the Lord. They that hope in the Lord. He said, their strength shall be renewed. Their strength shall be renewed. They will mount wing as ego. You know how ego mount wing and soar, and he soar without restriction. He move, he run, he fly without barrier, without restriction. He said they will mount wing as ego, and he said they will run and they will not be weary and they will walk and not be fainted. So shall it go to be upon your life. You will not be fainted. You will not be weary anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Second Chronicle chapter 4, verse 16. The Bible says, Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man, outward body is perishing, yet the invisible man is being renewed day by day. Our spirit are being renewed day by day. And that is the hope of the saint. That is the hope that we have. That is the hope of the saint. That our spirit being renewed, even though our physical body is perishing because of hunger, because of tribulation, but we have hope. We still have hope. Church, we still have hope. Our hope is the Lord Jesus Christ. Our hope is eternity. Our hope is that everyone who is connected to this service, you will make heaven in the name of Jesus because your hope in God will not fail. Your hope through Christ will not fail. You will make heaven in Jesus' mighty name. I pray. Amen. Isaiah 40, chapter 29. He said, He gave power to the weak and strength to the powerless. He gave power to the weak. In other words, He gave hope to those who are weak and to those who are hopeless. So number four, I am going to talk about true hope in Christ. We gain access to peace and joy. You can see, so many are rejoicing. So many are not bitter in their mind. So many are not in a state of sadness, irregardless of the challenges and of the situation. So many are rejoicing. Do you know where that joy is coming from? That joy is not coming from the world. That joy is not coming from your friends. That joy is not coming from your family. That joy is coming from the Lord Jesus Christ. The hope that we have. The joy and happiness you have today is coming from the hope we have in Christ. Because of Christ, that's why you are, you, 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 inward in your spirit, in your spirit, you feel joy, you feel happy. Even when you see the situation that is going around, that is moving around, but something in your spirit will be popping up joy, popping up happiness, popping up rejoicing. You see, so now why? Because of the hope we have here in Christ. In the book of Romans chapter 15, verse 13, he said, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. He said, May the Lord of hope, may he give you 
the peace and the joy. So I want you to know that through this hope we gain access to peace and then joy. John 14, 27, he said, Peace I live with you. He said, My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. He said, Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I believe God is speaking to somebody here whom his heart is troubled, whom have anxiety, who is having this fear within him. He said, Let your heart not be troubled. He said, Peace I live with you. He said, My peace I give unto you. And it's not as word give. This is a divine peace and a divine hope which we have in God. He has given us peace through the hope that we have in Him. And I prophesy into your life that that hope we continue to generate peace and joy in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, Romans 5 1, he said, We have peace through Jesus as we have been justified through faith. So, through hope, we have peace and joy. You see, number five, through our hope in Christ, light shines in darkness. We have light that shines in every part of our life. We have light that shines in dark places. First Thessalonians 5, verse 5. He said, you are all the children of light and the children of the day. He said, we are not of the night, nor of darkness. We are the children of light. We are not of the night, nor of the darkness. But we are of light because of the hope which we have in Christ Jesus Christ. That is the reason why we are what? We are the children of light. John chapter 8 verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follow me will not walk in darkness, but we have the light of life. Whoever that have hope in him will not walk in darkness, but we walk in in light. John 1 verse 5, he said, the light shineth in darkness and darkness comprehended it not. So number 6, through our hope in Christ, we are secured and preserved. We are secured. We are preserved. We are secured. We are what? Preserved. Father, I decree and I declare as many who have hope in you receive divine security, receive divine preservation. As many who have hope in you receive divine security in the name of Jesus Christ. Through hope in Christ, we are preserved. Psalm 33, verse 18 to 20, it says, Behold, the eyes of the Lord is upon those who fear him. On those who hope in his mercy. The eyes of the Lord is upon those who fear him. And those who hope in his uh, mercy. In his word, mercy. Who hope in him. Who hope in his mercy. He said to deliver their soul from the dead. And to keep them alive. In famine. He said, Our soul wait for the Lord. He said, He is our help and He is our shade. Hope. Divine hope. Divine hope. It gives us access to preservation. And as you hope in Him, He will preserve you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I say, The Lord will preserve you. In the mighty name of Jesus. How do we access this divine hope? How do we access it? Because you may have asked a question. How am I going to access this divine hope? This supernatural hope. 
how do I go about it? How do I assess it? Number one, you must be born again. You must be born again. You must be born again. When we talk about born again, we are talking about rebirth. We are talking about those who are falling apart. You may have accepted Christ before as your Lord and personal Savior. But for the time being, you are no more connected. You have fallen apart. You are no more following and you are no more loving him. You are no more having the spirit, indwelling spirit in you that bear the, wit the witness of Christ. It is time for you to rededicate your life. I tell you true, that hope will come back. That hope of eternity, that divine hope will come back. As you born again, as you rededicate your life back to God, as you confess your sin and repent of every iniquities, the hope will come back again. In the name of Jesus Christ. John chapter 3 verse 3, Jesus answered to Nicodemus. He said, except a man be born again, he said he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. If you are not born again, you no heaven for you. You cannot experience this hope we are talking about. You cannot experience the joy that this hope carries, the divine security that this hope carries, the protection that this hope carries, the blessing that this hope carries. You will not enjoy them. You will not have access in them if you are not born again. How do we born again? You need to accept Christ. You need to embrace him. You need to open up your mind and say, Jesus, come into my life. As I accept you again as my Lord and personal Savior. And begin to rededicate and begin to fellowship with him. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, he said, if any man be in Christ, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, he said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He said, all things have passed away. Behold, all things become a new. It is time for you to rededicate your life back to God. Number two, you must keep believing and trusting in the Lord. Keep believing in Him. Keep hoping in Him. Keep believing in Him. This is the way that you can assess the divine hope. Keep on believing. Even when things are not working the way it should be. Even when there is no result in your prayer. Even when there is no result in your work. There is no result in your expectation. Keep on believing. That believing, that will give you access to inherit that hope, divine hope we are talking about. Keep on trusting, keep on believing, keep on focusing on Him, keep on following Him. Even though there is no benefit that you are seeing physically, always remember there is always a spiritual reward. God will not abandon you. He will always surface at the end. I know that this season of virus will fade away. It will fade away very soon. This season, as Ecclesiastes said, that everything has season. The season of virus, coronavirus, the season of lockdown, it shall pass away. It shall end very soon. In the name of Jesus Christ, the season will come to an end and another season will come. And that is the season of celebration. That is the season of joy. That is the season of blessings. That is why every child of God, never you, never you, never you wander away from God. Never you cut off from God. Keep on believing Him. Keep on trusting in Him. And I pray with you, and I pray for you, that God, who has been faithful, and who keep being faithful, as you keep believing him, your expectation will not be cut off. In the name of Jesus. Hebrew 11, Hebrew 6, 11. He said, and we desire each of you to show the same earnestness, to have the full assurance of hope until the end. Until the end. Keep on hoping until the end. So we assess this hope by keep believing until the end. Number three, you must feed yourself daily with the word of God. 
This will strengthen, this will give you access to this divine hope. This will give you access to this divine hope. You must be daily, 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 daily feed your heart, feed your spirit with the word of God. Romans 15, 4, it says, For whatever things we are written before we are written for our learning, that through the patient and comfort of the scripture might make what? Hope. My hardware, hope. Through the patient, is talking about through the written word, through the word of God, and through the patient that we have till the end, he says that we might have what? Hope. You see that? It is the, 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 the hope that it is when we have the word of God, that gives us access, that connects us to this fullness of hope divine hope in God or divine hope in Christ. So I want you to understand that the word of God is what enlighten you. It is the word of God that give you the assets and the ways. That is why David, he says in Psalm 119 verse 105, he says, your word is a lamb for my feet and a light on my path. It is the word of God that guides. It is the word of God that gives you access to keep on believing and hoping for the best and for the betterment of the future and of tomorrow. So your hope can never be cut off if you have and feed your life, feed yourself with the word of God. Number four, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we have this access to this divine hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why he say in the book of Romans 15, verse 13, he said, now, the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that he may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost, through the power of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians 2.10, he said, The Spirit searches all things, the deep things of God. It is time for you to embrace the Holy Spirit. It is time for you to connect to the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you, to teach you, to show you the way, to enlighten your spirit, to help you every area that you cannot help yourself. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen you. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you the strength and give you the enablement that you will stand and you will continue to follow God in the name of Jesus Christ. How do we keep this divine hope alive? How do we keep this divine hope alive after we have access to this divine hope? How do we keep it alive? Number one, you must have a possibility mentality. You must have a possibility mentality. Think positive always. How do we keep this hope, divine hope alive? Think possible and think positive always. Always assume that everything is possible with God. And that's what the Bible says. That with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. Possible confection will always manifest possibility result. Each time you think, the Bible says, as man thinketh, so he is. Declare a thing, Job 22, 28, he said, you shall declare a thing, it shall what? It shall come to pass. In other words, according to your thought, according to how you think, according to how you reason, so shall it going to be. Because there is power that work in us, that everything, every thought and everything we reason, it shall always manifest. It shall always bring reality. So be very careful of what you imagine. Be very careful of what you think all the time. Because when you have a possibility mentality, a mentality of all things are possible, it shall become possible. And I pray for you that as you think positive, as you think and have a mentality of possibility, all things shall become possible for you according to the word of God in the name of of Jesus Christ. 
in the book of Mark chapter 9, verse 23. He said, to him that believes. He said, all things are possible to him that believes. To him that hope in God. To him that believes. All things are possible. Church, brethren, what do you believe? What is your mentality taught? Are you thinking that you are going to die? Are you thinking that you are going to live? In Psalm 118, verse 17, he said, You shall not die, but you shall live to worship the Almighty God. You shall not die, but you shall live. In Psalm 91, verse 16, he said that he will satisfy you with a long life. So now you need to think to live. Think heaviness. Think that you are preserved and you are secured. And so shall it going to be in the name of Jesus Christ. In Proverbs 23, 7, he said, As man thinketh so in his heart, so he is. So he is. First Chronicle chapter 4, verse 10. Jabez, he said that I cannot live a painful life even though my name is a career of poverty or a painful life. I cannot live a painful life. And he addressed it because the way he think, because of his mentality. He addressed the issue of life and God granted his desire. God granted his desire. Because the Bible made us understand that with him, all things are possible. Everything is possible with God. And God will grant your desire as you have this possibility mentality. Then, in Isaiah chapter 38, verse 2 to 5, there was a man called Hezekiah. When Isaiah the prophet, God sent him, go and tell him that he's going to die. And he said, how can I die? When my life has not fulfilled. How can I die at this stage? How can I die when my time has not come? And the Bible said that he faced the world and he began to declare the word of God. He began to declare his hope in God. He began to take over his inheritance and the promises of God. The same God that sent Isaiah that go and tell him that he's going to die. The same God sent back Isaiah. Tell Hezekiah that he will not die. But he will do what? He will live. Church, you will not die. You will live in the name of Jesus. You will not die, but you will live. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Number two, how do we keep this hope alive? Rejoice in your heart always. Rejoice in the midst of circumstances. In the midst of trial, embrace joy. Rejoice in the Lord. Don't accommodate bitterness. Don't accommodate anxiety. Don't accommodate fear. But continue to invite joy. Rejoice. And as you rejoice, so shall it go to be joy will not depart in your family. Joy will not depart in your life. Joy will not depart in your home. In the name of Jesus, may the joy of the Lord be your portion. Romans 12, verse 12, he said, Rejoice in hope, patient in tribulation. Patient in what? Tribulation. That's what in 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 to 19, he said, Give thanks to God. He said, Give thanks to God. In other words, rejoice always. Pray with us, is it? In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ consigning you. Consigning you. He said, quench not the spirit. Quench not the spirit. What is he trying to tell you? Quench not the spirit of joy. It is joy that brings healthy life. It is joy that brings healing. It is joy that brings deliverance. It is joy that brings miracles. As you rejoice in this season, as you refuse to quench the spirit of joy, 
I pray for total deliverance in your life. I pray for total healing in your body. And I pray for miracles in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus mighty name, I prayed. Then number three, remember the testimony of your past victories. How do we keep this hope alive? By remembering the testimony of your past life. I want to ask you a question. Is there anything that is happening now that has never happened before? Even in the biblical record. There is nothing happening on earth here that was not recorded in the Bible. There is nothing happening today that has not happened before. That's why scripture is very, very important. The word of God is very, very important. For references, for us to know that there is hope for us. And there is hope for you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the book of Lamentation 3 verse 21, he said, this I recall, Lamentation 3 21. He said, this I recall to my mind, therefore. He said, I have hope. Verse 22, he said, it is of the Lord mercy that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. His compassion fail not. It is of the Lord mercy that we rejoice. You see, he said, this I recall, he remember the past, the past victory, the past testimonies. There is testimony one way or the other in your line the time past. Most of you, you have escaped death. You have escaped disease before. You have escaped sickness. You have escaped dangerous attack. And the same way you escaped before, you will escape in this season. You will escape the pestilence and the viral diseases. You will escape the virus that is hovering around. In the name of Jesus Christ, say, I will escape because I have escaped before. I will win, I will conquer because I have conquered before. Because I have the testimony record before. And the same way it happened before, it shall happen. It shall happen, you will escape every attack. In the name of Jesus Christ, continue to remember the testimony of the past victory, the past testimony of your life. One way on the other, on the other check your life. You have a testimony. 10 years ago, 5 years ago, 20 years ago, you may have escaped death. You may have escaped one attack on the other. So that is what keeps your hope alive. When you continue to remember the goodness and the kindness of God and all the things that he has done for you, you discover that you will continue to hope in him. And you continue to so That's why David said, he said that forget not the benefit he said, rejoice, all my souls, all my spirit, all my heart. He said, rejoice. He said, forget not the benefit. He's talking about the things that the Lord has done in the time past. And the same God that did it before, that same God, he will do it again. God who kept you alive. God who made you to escape evil of the wicked ones. That same God will help you and you will escape every devices of the wicked ones in this season. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to conclude and Psalm 130 verse 7. He said, Oh Israel, put all your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. Remember, you are being redeemed. You are being redeemed. You are being set apart. You have been embraced by God. Your life has been hid with Christ in God. Colossians 3, 3. He said your life hid in, in, with Christ in God. So you have been redeemed. It, God was speaking to entire Israel. He said, oh Israel, put your hope in the Lord. For with the Lord is unfailing love. God loves you so much. And his love will not fail in your life. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to encourage you in this season, rely on God's presence. In Psalm 23 verse 4, he said, Yea, although I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he said, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. 
He said, Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God's rod and the staff, they comforted you. They shield you, and so shall it go to be in the name of Jesus. I encourage you, number two, to rely on God's provision. God is a great provider. He will not abandon you. He will not let you down. He will make provision of your need. According to 2 Corinthians 12, 9, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. That's what he said to Paul. The grace of God is sufficient for you in this season. It's sufficient for you in the midst of the adversary. It's sufficient for you in these circumstances. The grace is abundance. And so shall it go to be. Philippians 4 verse 19. He said, God will supply all your need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. He will supply all your need. It's a promise. And so shall it go to be. In the name of Jesus Christ. Then, number three encouragement that I'm encouraging you, rely on God's power and God's strength. As I said before, Philippians 4.13, he said, through Christ you can do all things. As you hope and rely on him, you will do great things. You will do mighty things. Romans 5.5, 5, he said, hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our heart through the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 23, 18, for surely there is a future and your hope will not be cut off. Your hope will not be cut off. That is my prayer for you. Your hope in God shall not be cut off. In the name of Jesus, your hope in God shall not be cut off. Lift up your right hand and shall declare. Father, I declare and declare upon as many who are connected, upon as many who are watching, you are hope in God, it shall not be cut off. It shall not be cut off. It shall not be cut off. He will supply all your need in the name of Jesus Christ. He will supply all your need in the name of Jesus Christ. He will preserve you. He will protect you in the name of Jesus. He will make provision for you. He will strengthen you. He will empower you, especially in this season. You will not be weak. You will not be weary. In the name of Jesus, the God of hope, the God of peace, God of favor, God of preservation, He shall come for your aid. He shall come for your need in this season. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because He has promised that He will not fail. And He will not fail you. And He will not fail indeed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, lift up your right hand. Father, I decree and declare, this new week, you will hear a good news. There shall be no more bad news. There shall be no more news that will frighten you and news of fear. There shall be a news that will bring rejoice and you will dance a dance of his glory. In the book of Psalm 126, according to the word of God, he said, when God remembered Zion, they were like they that were dreaming. This season, may you be remembered. In the name of Jesus, this new week, I pray that as you look and hope in him, God will remember you for favor. Because the Bible says that we look unto a hill, unto the hill, and our help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I prophesy into your life, you will not lack help. Your helpers will locate you in this season. In the name of Jesus, and nothing shall cut you off from the love of God. Nothing shall cut you off from your salvation. Nothing shall cut you off from your service unto God and from your fellowship with God. Nothing shall cut you off. Nothing shall distance you from God. No sin, no iniquity, no trial, no temptation. The Bible says in Romans, it says, Who can separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation, shall disease, shall sickness separate us? Shall enemy separate us? Shall any situation, shall hunger separate us? Nothing shall separate you as I decree in the name of Jesus Christ. Say, I am highly favored. Say, I am highly blessed. Say, I am preserved. Say, I am secured because my hope 
is in the Lord. So shall it going to be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want to announce to us that we'll be having three days fasting and prayer as we connect to our spiritual fathers and they're engaging a prayer of deliverance, prayer of healing, and prayer of rest, and prayer of peace, and prayer that we bring joy and peace in this season. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, three days fasting and prayer, six to six. Please, I know that you have a free time now to pray and fast. I will send you the scripture in our workshop. I want you to join this fasting and prayer. We are going to pray for peace to be and reign upon the earth and reign upon every individual on the earth and churches. And we're going to pray for healing on the earth here, that God will heal the earth and God will advert the, the conspiracy of the wicked ones. God will advert the work of darkness. God will advert every agenda of darkness against the body of Christ and against you and I in this season. It shall turn back to the sender. In the name of Jesus, join the fasting and prayer, and you remain blessed. And also, I encourage you, be watchful, be alert, and study your Bible. Pray without season. Pray all the time. Anywhere you find yourself, make sure you are praying. And always pray. God will always answer. In the name of Jesus. And also, I encourage you, also, behave well in your vicinity. And also, remember that the government said you should stay at home. Don't violate the law. Stay at home. Keep the order of the government. Keep the order of the environment. Those who are causing violence and those who are causing havoc. I want you to know that God is not happy. So we need to maintain peace and we need to adhere to the policy and adhere to the law. And as you do so, God will bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless all the FCI members and as many who are connected God is with you and God will supply for all your need. God will make way. God will not abandon you. He loves you. He said the thought I have for you is a thought of blessing. He said thought to prosper you. He will prosper you. Bet me this season will fade away very soon. And I know that glorious season will come and it will manifest very soon. In the name of Jesus, so shall they going to be. I love you all, and God love you more. In Jesus' name, amen. It is well with you. God bless you. God bless you. If you have your tithe or offering, anything, just keep it. Don't worry, we'll meet very soon. And God will continue to bless you. Amen.